Hello, my name is Rod Norval. I'm a senior engineer in, uh, in Canonical um, and uh, the PTL for the Charms project in OpenStack. I'm here to talk to you about uh, how to perform a hassle-free migration from OES to OEM. First, let's start with an introdu introduction to OVN. OVN is uh, the next gener generation uh, SDN for, for OpenStack and other cloud management systems. Uh, for, for OpenStack, uh, uh, the components involved are uh, the central components. Uh, and uh, on each hypervisor, you place uh, so, uh, something called uh, the chassis component, which um, uh, controls the, the local open way switch. Uh, the arch, high level architecture of um, OVN itself uh, is um, it has a, a, um, a API uh, facing to the cloud management system, which is called the northbound database. Uh, and uh, the, the cloud management system, in this case OpenStack, uses this API to, to program. Uh, low, uh, high level uh, rules, uh, logical flows, switchers, routes, uh, access control lists, load balancers, and things like that by communicating to the northbound database. OVN then has a uh, northbound uh, a daemon called OVN NorthB, which um, translates this high level uh, logical information into low level uh, data constructs uh, into the southbound database. Which is consumable by uh, the, the OVM controller, which runs on each hypervisor. The OVM controller then uh, connects to the southbound database and uh, loads all the uh, relevant information for that hypervisor and uses that to program the local open the switch. So, why do we want to use OVM? Uh, OVM is a virtual networking for open switch built by the open switch community. Uh, it is cloud management system agnostic, which means you can use it for OpenStack, Kubernetes, and possibly others. Uh, I believe there is now a uh, support for this in LXD as well. Um, it, it has a different uh, scalability characteristics than the ML2 OBS solution, and it uh, also has a higher efficiency uh, with uh, programming each hypervisor. Um, uh, OVM provides uh, distributed routing by default for east-west traffic. Uh, it uh, provides uh, HA north-south routing by default. It also supports DVR if you have a use case for that. Um, OVM uses OpenFlow uh, uses OpenFlow heavily. Uh, so uh, uh, security groups and layer three routing uh, and all kinds of network uh, constructs is programmed into the Open switch using OpenFlow rules. This again uh, allows uh, all of this to be uh, offloaded to hardware uh, when you have the uh, if you have a capable smart NIC and the right kernel level and the switch levels and things like that. Uh, the ML2 plus OVS solution does not allow hardware offloading of layer three routing, for example. This is something you can do with OVM. Uh, the control plane is uh, is a TLS and uh, uses a role-based access control by default. And this means that if uh, anyone compromises a single hypervisor, uh, they cannot use their uh, credentials for the OVN database to, to destroy other parts of the, the cloud. Um, OVN also implements a, a native DNS and DHCP uh, service distributed in each uh, open v switch. Um, and this means that there's less agents running uh, on, on each hypervisor. Uh, the OVN community is, is very active. Uh, it's uh, uh, both with um, uh, uh, software distributions and uh, large consumers of their project uh, uh, are actively contributing. Uh, actively contributing. Uh, it, it's a venture neutral solution. And you, you can also do things like integrate with hardware network infrastructure uh, if, you, if you have a, a hardware switch capable of uh, uh, speaking the OVSDB hardware beta schema. Uh, and of course, the, the central control plane is, uh, is HA. 
uh, using active 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 uh, and raft as a consensus algorithm. So, what are the things you need to plan for when doing a migration? Uh, first, I'll talk a bit about which versions uh, and other prerequisites are um, and other pre prerequisites. Uh, during the OpenStack Azure uh, cycle, uh, Neutron adopted the ML2 OBN driver into the main tree. Um, so our recommend, recommended upgrade path is to first upgrade to OpenStack Azure on Ubuntu Focal or Bionic, and then perform the migration from L2 to OBS, uh, ML2 OBS to OBN. Uh, and before you start, you, you need to use the OpenVSwitch firewall driver, uh, because this will uh, allow Neutron to clean up uh, any IP tables rules uh, per, uh, and yeah. So the next big thing to be aware of is uh, uh, MTU for uh, or maximum transmission units for your network. Uh, existing clouds typically use GRE or VXLAN tunnels, uh, and OBN uses Geneva tunnels. So the, the GRE overhead uh, for uh, each packet is 22 bytes. For VXLAN, it's 30 bytes. For Geneva, it's 38 bytes. Um, and the question you need, need to ask yourself is, does your cloud and network equipment have available headroom to increase the packet size? If it does not, uh, the only way to, uh, to move forward is to reduce the MTU on each individual instance. And this can be uh, accomplished by using uh, DHCP for instances that, that are using automatic. Excuse me. <clears throat> automatic uh, IP configuration. Um, do bear in mind that uh, uh, time needs to pass before changing the configuration until the instance actually pick up the new configuration when it's renewing release. It's also worth checking uh, even though uh, a workload is configuring its IP address using DHCP, it can still statically configure the uh, MTU. So you should go through uh, your typical workloads and validate that they actually use DHCP for MTU. Uh, instances using IPv6 uh, auto configuration will automatically adjust MTU uh, in real time when OVM takes over sending the router advertisements. And uh, statically configured instances require end user intervention prior to immigration. So you would have to uh, not notify uh, your users, the users of your cloud, to, to go in and change their configuration before doing the migration. Uh, and then some information about uh, uh, availability of control plane and downtime for data plane components during immigration. Uh, when you're doing immigration, whole regions must be migrated within a limited time frame. Uh, the reason for this is that during the migration, um, the ML2 OBS control plane uh, will not be able to communicate to the neutral server. Um, so you will not be able to make changes if something happens. Or And, and the neutral agents also, uh, the, the components programmed on the hardware process will will get into trouble if they are without communication with their uh, the neutral server for too long. Uh, you can migrate one hypervisor at a time, or do all of them at once, uh, to your discussion. Um, but do bear in mind that the instances running on the OBS estate, uh, ML2 plus OBS estate, will not be able to talk to instances running on the ML2 plus OBN estate during the migration and vice versa. Uh, control plane and individual hypervisor drive time depends on the number of instances allowed for your cloud. Um, as you will see in our demonstration soon, uh, uh, we, we built a three node cloud on modest hardware running 1,000 instances across 100 projects. Uh, and the control plane downtime we have there from start to finish was 25 minutes. Uh, and the per hypervisor data plane downtime while it was uh, about three minutes to clean up after ML2 OBS. And we used about one and a half minute to do the initial configuration and startup of OVN controller. So uh, uh, I'll talk quickly about uh, the steps you need to make to, to do a manual mi migration. Uh, and that for the control plane, that uh, involves, uh, as we talked about, reducing the instance MCTU if required prior to starting any anything. 
Uh, you need to deploy the OVN central component so they are ready for use and synchronization with Neutron. Uh, you need to stop Neutron agents on hypervisors uh, as a first step. Um, the next to, thing to do is adjust MTU on the, the, the networks, um, if that's required. Uh, this is important to do before synchronization with the OVN database, so we get it right uh, from the start. Uh, the tool to use to do this is um, a Neutron OVN Migration MTU, which is a part of the upstream Neutron project. And the next step to do is to migrate the Neutron data into OVN, and we do this with the Neutron OVN DB sync detail. Uh, an optional step is to, to change project network types to Geneve in the, in the Neutron database. Um, the Charms project provides a script you can use to, to do this. Uh, it's open source, and we are planning to upstream this to Neutron. Uh, steps on per hypervisor is to, to clean up after ML2 OBS. Uh, this uh, pertains of uh, uh, removing the patch ports on the integration bridge and removing the whole tunnel bridge. The reason this is very important is that when, once we start OBN controller, it will turn program tunnels and patch ports in a different manner than OBS. And if both of these are uh, present in the hypervisor at the same time, you will have uh, created a very effective infinite loop generator for you. And it will basically bring down your network. Uh, you need to remove a bridge controller configuration, uh, which Neutron sets up, uh, which is no longer used. Uh, and you need to remove uh, all the namespaces uh, created by the neutron ages. Uh, this is the DHCP metadata curator, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and the, the neutron netNS cleanup script can be used to do this. Um, if you uh, used the IP tables uh, uh, driver at some point, uh, you can use the neutron IP set cleanup tool to clean up any IP sets created by neutron. And the last step is to start the OBN controller. And uh, now I want to demonstrate how this can be accomplished using the uh, with automation using the the charms. To demonstrate, we have prepared a three-node cluster running OpenStack Victoria, and as you can see, it's uh, deployed in a hyper-converged uh, topology, which means that. Every node is running Ceph OSDs uh, for storage, and we have uh, Nova Compute units, which represents the hypervisors. There is no dedicated gateway here, as we are using Neutron uh, OpenV switch uh, ML2 driver with BBR enabled, and we are running the DHCP and metadata services on each compute node. We have uh, prepared a number of instances as a thousand to be exact, and that is uh, spread across um, around 100 projects. And each of those projects have their own router, their own network, their own subnet, uh, etc. which adds up to a number of ports, uh, which is useful to, to show how, how the migration works on a uh, under load. So the first thing we need to do is to, to get from, get ready the control plane components. Uh, and, and as we showed in the previous slides, uh, we need to add the OVN central components. Uh, and we have prepared that by adding a, um, a bundle, which defines the model of which the charms is deployed in. And we can see the difference between the current bundle we have now which boils down to adding a Neutron API plugin OVN unit. That's basically a subordinate unit, which um, adds the required uh, connections to Neutron for it to talk to OVN. In this case, that's um, uh, some extra configuration and uh, relation to the certificate authority, because as we, we said, um, OVN uses TLS for authentication. The OVN central components uh, are defined here, uh, and we add that to uh, three LXD containers to have the 
fetching. And we add the OBN chassis, which is the OBN version of the Neutron Open Me Switch Charm. So let's go ahead and deploy that on our existing deployment. And we can look at the progress here. It's important to note that in the bundle, uh, we added uh, a configuration option for the OVN chassis charm, uh, which instructs it to start with the units pulsed. This is very important at this stage in the migration because on the hypervisors, we already have Neutron ML2 OBS managing the local open switch. And if we were to have both ML2 plus OBS and OVM trying to migrate the hypervisor at the same time, you would get a uh, network loop. OK, now we have deployed the, the control plane components. At this point in time, uh, no changes has been made to the running cloud. Uh, and we can uh, confirm that we have connectivity to on the instance on each hypervisor. Now we can see that we have three instances with uh, a floating IP across three different hypervisors. Let's, uh, let's see if we can ping them. All right, connectivity confirmed. Now let's start the actual migration. First thing we will do is to pause the agents on the on the hypervisor, the neutron agents. Let's wait to that to settle. The next step is to migrate the MTU of the neutron networks. And now we will enable the OVN plugin on the neutron API so that we can start the initial sync. We can still ping the instance as you can see. And now we will uh, pause the Neutron units. And now we can start the Neutron to OVN DB sync. That's done. And now that we uh, have the con Neutron control plane down uh, anyway, we will also perform the offline uh, migration of network type. That's done. And now we will resume the Neutron API unit. Now we are ready to start the hypervisor migration. You can see that our instances are still responding to the ping. And for the for the sake of simplicity for this demonstration, we will uh, perform migration of all instances, uh, all hypervisors at the same time. We will start by running the cleanup action on the neutron open me switch units. As you can see, the instances will then soon stop responding to ping. This is, of course, because we are removing the configuration from the hypervisors. We will wait for that task to complete. Now the cleanup process is complete, and we will then uh, resume the OVN chassis units which will uh, perform initial configuration of uh, the OVM controller and uh, start the OVM controller.
And as you can see, the instances are now starting to respond again. And it did complete um, by losing around 300 pings, which means a total time, downtime of five minutes. Thank you for watching. Are there any questions?